Hi guys, I'm here with the Honourable Minister, Tanya Blubisak. Now Tanya, this year's election's running really tight and with the growing population, more new voters than ever are going to take part. How do you suggest that they choose their vote this year? Well, I think the most important thing is to take it seriously. Um, democracy really depends on every citizen of a nation taking their responsibility to choose very seriously. I go to a lot of schools, um, I go to a, a, have a lot to do with young people and I don't normally tell them um, which party they should vote for, although obviously I think they should vote for my party. Um, but the thing I always say is that it's really important to read the newspapers, get onto the party websites, talk to your friends, talk to people that you meet um, you know, casually in the street uh, about what our nation faces, what are the, what are the issues um, that would help them decide and then look at what the parties are offering on those issues. Malcolm, this year's election is closer than ever and with Australia's growing population rates, more first time voters will take part than ever before. How do they choose who to vote for? Well, they should vote for the party and the candidates that they believe will deliver a future here in Australia that will offer them the greatest opportunities to realise their dreams. Now, I'm Citizen Wentworth that I'm that candidate and I'm saying to all Australians that the Liberal Party and the National Parties are the coalition that can best deliver that. I think first time voters and all voters, frankly, have got to look at the policies of the parties but they've also got to look at the calibre of the candidates. You see, you can have a great policy, or you, might, you might think is great, but if the men and women that are proposing to carry it out lack the competence, the character, the courage, the conviction to do it well, then the policy is not going to be much good. And I'm afraid uh, what has been demonstrated to the dismay of many young people, especially that I speak to, who are idealistic. They are dismayed at the way in which the Rudd and Gillard government has walked away from so many big challenges, has shown itself to be lacking the courage of its convictions. You know, how, how they ask, could you be elected in 2007 on a platform of taking action to combat climate change, the greatest moral challenge of our times, and then walk away from it? It's uh, pretty disappointing. And I think many young people will look at that and say that is not the calibre, the character of the men and women we want to lead our nation. To be part of office you have to be a person of substance, yet why do so many politicians treat each other with little respect? Look, I think, um, I don't think you have to. I think you can be courteous in your work and still make a point that you disagree with someone. But at the end of the day, there are some very important issues that we really fundamentally disagree with. I think sometimes we perhaps uh, go a bit overboard with some of the, the uh, personal comments and that's usually not necessary. But you shouldn't expect politics to be... Um, you know, completely bloodless either because we, we believe very strongly. Personally, what's your favourite thing about Tony Abbott? Oh, uh, I really struggle to think of a favourite thing. Um, uh, Too many to think of. <laughs> yes, that's not really my problem. Uh, no, look, I, I get on personally with him fine. I just don't agree with what he stands for. To be elected to office, you obviously have to be a person of much substance. So why is it that politicians seem to treat each other with little respect? I think we should all be more courteous to each other, but it is a contest and I think sometimes uh, politicians are um, harsher in their judgments of each other than is warranted. That, that's, that's a fair criticism. And now, what's your favourite thing about Julia Gillard? <laughs> Well, you know, I've never thought about that before, so you've caught me on the, on the, uh, on the hop. Well, look, I'm, I'm delighted. I was delighted that we had a woman as Prime Minister. I think it was, you know, I'm a, a, um, a long-standing and notorious feminist. Um, I believe that women hold up half the sky, as the Chinese say, and I think it's good to see women in leadership roles right across the board. The Prime Minister, who is a woman, has to be judged on the basis of her track record, her competence, her conviction, uh, just like any other uh, politician is, whether they're a man or a woman. And I'm afraid 
while she does have the distinction of being our first woman Prime Minister, she is certainly not a great Prime Minister because she has demonstrated both incompetence and a lack of conviction. This year in this election, why vote Labor? There's a very long list of reasons that people should vote Labor and it starts with the fact that we've governed a strong economy that's meant Australia's been um, missed out on the worst aspects of the global financial crisis. It means that we've had employment growth of 350,000 in the last year compared with countries around the world that have had millions of extra people join the unemployment queues. Um, that we're investing in health, we're investing in education, we're training extra doctors and nurses, we're putting computers into schools. All of those things are important. But for young people, I think some of the issues that they should think about are the investment in a national broadband network. And that opens up just a whole new world of opportunities to young people in education, obviously, but also in the type of work they'll do in the future. The fact that we're increasing higher education funding and uncapping the number of student places by 2012, so more young Australians will have an opportunity of going to university, and we're increasing the rates of Aus study and making it easier for people to get onto Aus study. We're also expanding edu uh, vocational education as well to make it easier for people to get a trade. Uh, even before they leave school to start on that pathway into a, an apprenticeship or a trade. Um, the work that we're doing on body image for young people and um, mental health programs like doubling of the headspace centres around the country which are targeted mental health programs for young people as well. There are a lot of great reasons for young people to vote Labor but I don't ask them to take my word for it. What I think people should do is investigate that for themselves. They should look on the party websites, they should talk to their Member of Parliament, they should talk to the candidates in their local area and put that question to every candidate they meet and see, see the answers they get. Why should people vote for Liberal for 2010? Because what we offer you, what we offer all Australians, is a government that will restore respect, stability, security to the way our economy is managed and the way our country is governed. And above all, our philosophy, our view of the role of politics is not, as the Labor Party would say, having government at the centre of the economy. We believe that you are at the centre of the economy. You, your dreams are what government should be enabling. Your ability to realise your ambitions is what government should be seeking to do. In other words, we believe in freedom. We believe that you know best how to chart the course of your life and that we should be working to enable you to do your best. So that is why we are not in favour of, big, of a big new tax on the mining industry. We want to spend less and borrow less so that there is more scope for you to do your own thing, realise your own dreams, build your own businesses, you know, develop your own ambitions in the way you best uh, imagine them to be. We are really lucky in this country because uh, we get the opportunity of choosing who governs us. There are countries all over the world where you don't have that opportunity. You don't get a say over how you're governed or who governs you. And I think it's a really precious right that people need to take seriously. Can you comment on the media's coverage of the election so far? I think it's been what it always is. It's a, you know, it's a blow by blow account. Some of the commentary is more insightful than others but it's, uh, I don't think it's very different to what it's been in the past apart from of course the colourful appearance of the rookie journalist Mark Latham which uh, was, a, was a bit out of the ordinary. Are you brave enough to shake my hand? I'm glad to hear it. Oh look, I don't think you can believe 100% of what you read in the newspapers. In fact, I take it all with a grain of salt because when I'm involved in a story, I see um, that the reporting's not always 100% accurate. It's still important, I think, to read the papers and listen to the news. You get a flavour of what's going on. But if you can go beyond what you're reading uh, in the mainstream, media and actually do your own investigations, you'll get a much better idea of what's going on. Hey guys, this is Chief Political Correspondent Karen Middleton here at SBS. Karen, this election is fast approaching. How do you feel it compares to those in the past? Uh, it's crazy, this election. Everybody's using the word weird. It's um, a very unusual election campaign. 
There's not a lot of vision, there's not a lot of new policy, it's a lot of um, reducing things down to a battle between the two leaders and a lot of journalists who've covered election campaigns in the past are all saying that they think this one's quite unusual. Being a political reporter, how do you go about finding your information and then deciding what's newsworthy? Aha, the great question. Well, a lot of information gets sent to us. Uh, we get press releases, we get um, phone calls from people and there are events that are on. Um, it's a very orchestrated set of events so the the two main leaders will be traveling the country they'll have a posse of journalists traveling with them the media will pay for the privilege of following them around uh, but you're a little bit captive when you're in that situation because they are setting the agenda in terms of what they're doing every day what events they're doing and you're trailing along going to their news conferences uh, and trying to ask them some questions outside of an election campaign it's slightly different some of the information as i say comes direct to us some of it we have to go out and chase and it's an internal battle between those two things. The things we find that are always more interesting are the things they don't want to tell you and that they don't want you to know about. So journalists are always trying to get out from underneath the enormous amount of information that we have to process just naturally in the course of the, of the day and dig around and find out the things that are actually going on that they don't want you to know about. Australia is a fast growing population so this year more first time voters than ever are going to take part in the election. How do they decide who to vote for? Ah. I think they should be looking at what the various parties parties and individual candidates stand for. I think ideally you'd look at how their policies affect you in your own life and your family but you're also looking beyond that and seeing how do they affect the country as a whole and how do these leaders, let's face it, we are also judging the leaders, how do they um, make Australia the kind of Australia you want to live in. You know, it's a, it's a right to vote in Australia. A lot of people in countries overseas have fought and died for the right to vote. I think it's a great privilege as well as a right to vote and uh, it's also a responsibility and we should take the responsibility seriously and think carefully about how we're going to vote. Well, thank you very much and we look forward to following you in SBS as the election comes a lot closer. Thanks very much, Kirsty.